well, I'm, I'm happy that we have a Latin program going here now because that's what I was trained to do in my uh, graduate, undergraduate work. And so that's a delight to me that it's, it's taking hold and we're going to teach, teach Latin. Uh, but I love the humanities. <clears throat> uh, they are, uh, they represent a breadth of, of interests of mine that perfectly suit me. Um, I, I'm not a music specialist or an art specialist or an anything else specialist and humanities really fill, fill that need for me to be a bit more broad in, in my interests. Uh, two things, I think, the love of my field, the love of the humanities and, and specifically of ancient languages and literature and uh, also my love of uh, student interaction and watching watching things happen to students as they encounter uh, some of the arts that I try to represent. And that can be um, profound in either direction. I had one student uh, tell me after taking uh, the opera section, after we finished the opera section of my 1010 class, he said, Mr. Fossum, um, I used to hate opera, but I had no idea why. Now I know why. <laughs> so that's on one end of the spectrum. And on the other end is, um, uh, would be people who come to me and say, I never have listened to opera music before, and now I have it in my CD player in my car, and my roommates think I'm crazy. <laughs> that's the other end that's, that's equally, uh, equally humorous, <laughs> but also very satisfying to me. I think uh, music would have to top the list there. Um, I think I've been more inspired and moved by great music than I have by any other single art form. Uh, right after that would probably be what I'm working on now, which is uh, visual arts. Um, I, I have a son who's an artist and that's gotten me interested in visual artist, arts. And I have a, uh, a sublimated uh, desire to actually try my hand at painting. And I plan to take some art lessons and see if that desire can, can come to anything other than scratchings and scribblings. Um, any specific pieces? I would say that uh, there are some some works of uh, sacred choral music that have been extremely like. Um, um, well, believe it or not, um, some of Eric Whitaker's stuff that's being done right now, uh, which some of it is in Latin, um, but just the tonalities and the dissonances and harmonies of his particular style of composition, I, I find extremely. Where is he working from? He's he's a he's he's a guy like some of the rest of us who just grew up with music, couldn't read music, and he wanted to be a rock and roll singer, and um, he got sucked into a a choir class in high school because the girls were so cute, and he became just absolutely uh, enamored of. Uh, he sat in the middle of a Mozart requiem. In fact, his his quote, if I may, uh, is, uh, "I had seen the world in black and white." And when I sat down and listened to those dissonances and harmonies of that requiem, he says, everything changed to living color. And that changed his life. And he is a, he's a musical genius. He's since learned how to read music. But he composes in all sorts of wonderful ways. Um, well worth the time to, to look at him on YouTube. Boy, you know, for a person with so many scattered and varied interests uh, in this field as, as I have, and, and I must confess, uh, little uh, little expertise in any one of them. <laughs> I would have to say, and perhaps it's because that's what I'm studying right now, is just Michelangelo and his and his works. Um, he also seems to be a, a man of varied interests, uh, though he had mastered, seemed to have mastered all of them. Um, but uh, his, and I, and I suppose one of the intriguing things about him is his apparent um, attempts to bring together the theological trends and the philosophical trends that were impacting culture at this time. As the church was trying to rationalize their love of Plato with their love of the Bible and make them mesh, and how they ended up compromising to do so, I think is, a, is an enchanting story. And Michelangelo was right in the middle of that. And as we see his work progressing from extremely pious religiously based work like the Pietà and how the various Pietas then he sculpted from that point on to the end of his life 
and how they illustrate to me some sort of a struggle to come to grips with his desire for intellectual uh, freedom and his desire also to serve God and be a theologically profound person. Um, at least that's the way I'm sort of interpreting his life. That's just my own bias. But uh, he is a very fascinating creature to me. And how has that impacted your worldview? I think it has allowed me to see things a bit more broadly. Um, <clears throat> I was um, I was brought up in a in a pretty strictly religious uh, community and family, and um, I think getting out uh, and seeing beyond that without rejecting that has been a great experience for me. Uh, understanding uh, a worldview that maybe didn't harmonize with my own, and yet and yet accepting the fact that we can all be diverse and yet be friends and understand one another um, in spite of our differences has been a, a, a wonderful experience.